and welcome to my channel, Thriving Not Just Surviving. I'm your host, Jarley Henry. If you're new to this channel, I discuss lifestyle tips primarily focusing on longevity and anti-aging. This includes skincare, supplementation, diet, fitness, and all that good stuff. If that's the kind of content that appeals to you, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. This week, for the first time, I successfully made the Japanese superfood natto. Now, if you haven't yet heard about this miracle food and what it does to help keep our bodies looking and feeling young, then stay tuned because I'm doing a deep dive today. Natto is soybeans fermented with a specific type of bacteria. It's a traditional food in Japan and it's typically eaten over rice for breakfast, but it can also be eaten at other times of the day. Many people in Japan believe that natto keeps them looking young and living longer. Is this true? And if so, what is it about natto that assists in anti-aging? Natto is extremely high in vitamin K. Just one tablespoon contains 150 milligrams, which is twice the recommended daily intake. As we age, we lose bone density. And this is the reason why older people are at risk from hip fractures if they fall, for example. But what most people don't realise is that this bone density loss also occurs in the face. For example, our cheekbones will recede as we get older, which further contributes to the skin sagging and giving us an aged appearance. Vitamin K preserves bone density, thereby stopping some of this sag from occurring and keeping our features closer to how they appeared when we were young. The other thing about natto is that it is high in vitamin E and vitamin B6, and these both boost cell turnover and slow skin aging. Natto is great for skin health, but it keeps us younger in other ways too. Because the soybeans are fermented, more of the nutrients are preserved. Therefore, natto is high in protein, iron and fibre. A diet rich in natto lowers risks of strokes and cardiovascular disease and has positive effects on blood pressure and weight. So the bacteria which ferment natto produce a specific enzyme called natto kinase. This enzyme is a health powerhouse. It improves sinus health, assisting with conditions such as asthma, sinusitis, bronchitis, and it improves your gut bacteria. Anyone who's been watching this channel for a while will have heard me banging on about the importance of gut health over and over again, but I'm still gonna bang on about it some more because your gut health is critical to everything when it comes to your health and well-being. If you have a healthy gut, you will be happier as 95% of our serotonin is manufactured in the gut. You'll be slimmer because your digestion will be more efficient and you'll also absorb more nutrients from the food, making you healthier. And you'll have a better immune system. Even brain fog and skin conditions such as acne and eczema have been linked to bad bacteria in the gut. So it is crucial to do whatever you can to make your gut bacteria as robust and healthy as you possibly can. Eating natto is one more thing you can do to protect your gut. And I think it's worth mentioning at this point that some people do take natto kinase supplements instead of eating natto. If you try natto and you really just can't stand it, that is another alternative. But then you would just be getting the natto kinase um, supplement. You wouldn't be getting also all the fiber and the protein and the benefits of the soy as well. Now that I've spoken about all the good stuff natto does, I'm sure you're all raring to go and eat bowlfuls of the stuff daily, right? Well, hold your horses, because the one downside of natto is that it has a flavour and texture that can best be described as challenging. It's kind of like Marmite, you either love it or hate it. In fact, even in Japan, up to 60% of people polled admitted that they don't like it, but they eat it anyway because it's so good for them. The first time I tried natto, I hated it. To me, it tastes like beer, that sour, slightly bitter taste with a fermented aftertaste. Now, I don't mind beer so much, so to me the taste was not so bad, but it's more the texture that's really hard to cope with. It's kind of slimy and stringy. Um, now, before I lose all of you, I have found that making it myself produces a natto which is less pungent and easier to eat. I followed an online recipe and used an Instant Pot. It's really easy to make. Um, you just need to buy the raw soybeans and the correct bacteria, which I bought on eBay. I'll include a link to the recipe and the bacteria on eBay below. Then after doing some more research, I discovered that most people in Japan eat it with soy sauce and a special type of traditional mustard. Now this mustard, it tastes, it's quite a strong mustard and it tastes quite a lot like um, wasabi. And then with the soy sauce, it will be any good quality kind of soy sauce like curcumin will do. 
So I found that if I add these two ingredients, it does actually help quite a lot to make the natto taste better. What I do is I put it on a rice cake, just spread a little bit of the mustard really thinly on the rice cake, not too much because it is super strong and super spicy. Then I put the, heat the natto on top, it's kind of a tablespoon, and then I drizzle soy sauce over the top, and that does make it a lot more palatable. Um, you can also try adding a few chopped up spring onions if that improves the taste for you. That is something that they do traditionally in Japan. So what I'm planning to do with my natto, now that I've made my first batch, I'm planning to try to aim to make 100 grams of dry soybeans into natto each week. So 100 grams of soybeans makes enough that that will, um, that will give you enough natto to last the whole week. And then I'll be able to eat a tablespoon a day on a rice cake as kind of an afternoon snack. I've also heard that some Japanese women swear by eating it directly before they go to bed because at night our skin undergoes cell turnover and renewal. So you could try that and let me know if you notice a difference in the quality of your skin. That's it for today. Please comment below. Have you tried natto? What did you think? Are you the kind of person who is able to eat foods you don't particularly like just for the health benefits? Or perhaps you're a regular natto eater already, and if so, do you have any tips for us on how to make it more palatable? I've really enjoyed making this video on natto and trying it out for the first time. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it too. And if this is the kind of content that you like, like I said before, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and please hit the notification bell. That's it for this week. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.